Somewhere Ecovax is lacking is giving detailed instructions on using its Ecovax home vacuum app. There are many features in this app, some being a bit obscure. I will be going over most of the features of the app for the T20 Omni. There's not much on the first screen. You can see our online and battery percentage statuses, as well as the share option, which I personally never use. I just use the same login on all devices. As far as I see, it does the same thing. This is also one of the two places you can rename your robot, and this is where you delete the robot from your account. Over here to the right, at the blue Y, you have the Yiko voice assistant introduction. Side note, Alexa and Google will still work with this vacuum. You can start an auto clean and send it to the recharge from here. To get to the main map and controls, click on Enter Smart Cleaning. You will first need to let it update your firmware, then create your map. The fastest way is by using the Quick Mapping option. This will be on the screen when you first start. Auto Mode will also map, but it takes four times as long, because it covers every inch of your floor plan rather than just scanning the walls. I find very little difference in the results of the two mapping methods. Once you've completed your map, you should have a screen similar to this. At the top right, you again see your battery percentage plus the vacuum's current cleaning mode, which is very important information to know before you send it out to clean. At the top, the nut icon is one of two ways to get to your settings menu, which I will cover later. Beneath that is an icon that looks like two pieces of paper, which opens a menu where you can change the display settings of your map, such as switching from 2D to 3D views. Back to the main page, you can see on the left where it says Map 1, Pressing that will take you to Map Management, where it shows you your saved maps. This is where you go to edit and or change your maps if you have more than one. You can have up to three saved maps. Also, at the top right, you are able to start quick mapping if your vacuum is in an unmapped area you want to map. This is where you edit your maps and can manually select which map you want your vacuum to use. It used to just automatically recognize your area and select the correct map, but that wasn't always 100% accurate. Also, at the top right of each saved map, you can see an icon of a piece of paper with a small gear. This is where you back up, restore, name, and delete your apps. If you click on Map Editing, in the bottom left you'll have Virtual Boundaries. This is where you put a line or a square where you don't want the vacuum to travel. Additionally, if you select Labeled Areas, you can click on a room and give it a label that can be used with your vacuum's voice control. Selecting Divide, here you can click on the room you want to divide and place the line where you would like to divide it. However, the line needs to be solid and between two solid walls. You cannot divide off another divide wall. The check mark will turn blue. If you press Combine, you can select two rooms you want to combine, then press Combine to confirm. Going back to the original page, at the bottom left you can see the blue Y. This is one of two ways to enable and change the volume on your Yuko voice assistant. You can also see Housekeeper mode. Theoretically, this tells your device to vacuum and or mop your whole house, depending on how it best calculates how everything needs to be cleaned. Personally, I don't use it. Housekeeping mode seems to override all cleaning modes and vacuums and mops simultaneously. It also usually covers each room twice in a crossing pattern, but this quickens the drain on your battery if not needed. So you're not able to cover as much ground on one charge. Just a little warning, housekeeping mode and auto mode have a tendency to upgrade your map in ways you may not want it to. You can always restore from backup, but in doing so, you will lose any scheduling you have set up. Personally, I stick to area mode when possible. At the bottom, you have the different vacuum modes. First, area mode. Here you manually select which rooms you want to clean and or mop. Then auto mode. Like housekeeping mode, this tells the vacuum to mop and or vacuum the whole house, but this is based on your vacuum mode. Next, furniture mode. If you set up your 3D map with furniture, You'll be able to tell the vacuum to clean around a specific piece of furniture, or if the furniture was moved, it vacuums where the furniture was located. 3D Maps is a feature I personally have not chosen to use. Lastly, you have Custom Mode. This is where you put a square on the area you want the vacuum to cover. This setting is only good for one job. Under that, you have Cleaning Preferences. Here is where you set the vacuum's cleaning mode. Vacuum only, mop only, vacuum and mop mode, and one that is easy to miss, when you scroll to the left, you'll see Mop After Vacuum. In my personal opinion, this will keep your filter cleaner longer, because vacuum and mopping mode can get the filter wet if your suction is not turned down. Underneath that, you see the cleaning times, once or twice. When selecting twice, it will vacuum the room one time in each direction. Then you have suction power. 
Quiet has very little suction. Standard is what I recommend for hard surfaces. Strong is what I recommend for carpet. This actually is the level the vacuum automatically selects when carpet is detected if the auto boost suction option is selected. And hidden over to the right is max. Yes, it would clean your carpet better, but the suction is so high at 6,000 pascals, it quickly drains your battery. So use it sparingly if you want to do a lot of vacuuming. This is four times the suction rating of the older T8 vacuum using the same 5200 milliamp battery. Next, we look at station features. First, at the top right, under more information, you'll find an instruction manual with more detailed information about using and maintaining your station. And to the left, about station gives you your serial number and firmware version. These can also be found in the settings menu. Also under station features, you can manually start the cleaning of the mopping pads. Hot air drying will start once completed. You can preset the drying time, which we will cover later. You can also manually start the emptying of the dustbin, manually start and stop the hot air drying, and turn on and off hot water washing. Going back to that same menu, if you scroll the menu to the left, you will see customized scenario cleaning. This is where you set up customized scenarios that can be used with scheduling. I cover all this in another linked video called Scheduled Cleaning with Customized Scenario Cleaning with the T20 Omni and X2 Omni. Here, there is also another way to get to station features. Now when you scroll the bottom section up, you'll see more settings, the first being cleaning efficiency, standard, deep, and fast, which tells your vacuum how much overlap you want while vacuuming. Then here is where you enable edge deep cleaning. This rotates the vacuum while cleaning the wall so the mop gets right up against the edge. However, as stated, this only works in auto cleaning or housekeeper mode and theoretically is only performed once every seven days. Underneath that, you have a section called carpet cleaning strategy. This is where auto boost suction is enabled. When detecting carpet, it increases the suction of the vacuum cleaner. Then there are the different vacuum settings for carpets. I'll just let you read and decide what setting you would prefer. And don't forget the fine print at the bottom. After carpet cleaning strategy, the next section is cleaning sequence, where you select the order you want your rooms cleaned. And after that is smart cleaning. You first have your mopping setting, which is pretty self-explanatory and includes your hot air drying time. Then you have the auto empty settings. With the auto setting enabled, your vacuum empties itself when done cleaning. Well, with the smart option, as you can see here, it empties itself according to the intervals set above in mop cleaning, even if you're just vacuuming. Then you have continuous cleaning. When enabled, it charges your vacuum battery when empty, then finishes the current job. Next, you have your object avoidance settings. Personally, I recommend avoidance priority. Last, you have the unit measurement settings. The next section is scheduled cleaning. To take full advantage of this, you'll want to watch my attached video. The customized option is what works in conjunction with the previous scenario cleaning covered in the video. You then have language settings and volume. At the bottom, there's more settings, which takes you to the same menu as the nut icon shown previously. Here you have the second location where you can turn on and change the settings for Yiko. Then your cleaning log. Then a section called accessories and parts. Here it keeps track of the usage time of all your accessories and it will make a recommendation on when it feels it has met its life expectancy. Just use your own judgment. Next, we have another location to access your smart cleaning settings that we saw earlier. Then we have do not disturb. You'll most likely want to turn this on if you don't want your vacuum to surprise you in the middle of the night. Then here you turn on and off child lock, which makes it so pushing any physical buttons will not activate the vacuum. About Dbot is another place you can rename your vacuum as well as access your serial number, MAC address, and firmware version where you can enable automatic updates. You can also manage your Wi-Fi settings, see your IP address, and access your time zone settings. After About Dbot, you have your help settings again. I believe I covered everything. I hope this will help you navigate through this app.